Hi everyone, just thought I'd do this short video just to help you guys who are maybe having a bit of trouble getting tyres fitted to your 10 inch mini rims. Uh, try to get these um, these banded wheels which I've managed to refurbish, you can tell they're banded by the nice tasty seam weld running around the outside. Try to get them done by a local national tyre company. And because I'd purchased the, um, the tyres myself, it was against company policy to fit customers' own tyres, which is fair enough, but the tyres I want fitted on these are brand new, but um, far too expensive to purchase from them direct. So I went to one of our reputable um, mini suppliers out there to get the tyres. I want to fit the tyres myself, I've never done it before, uh, there's obviously a few things you need, there's the wheels, there's the tyres, there's the valves and tool wise, some decent tyre levers, you get four of these in a set from Machine Mart, I think they're about £17, they're very robust, much better than some of the flimsy versions you can get elsewhere but obviously a um, useful bit of kit to have around. So we've got the 10 inch wheels, we've got the valves, and for whatever reason I've decided to go down the inner tube route, and obviously inner tube with the valve on, means I don't have to mess about and uh, get any valves fitted in there, even though I'm presuming it's quite straightforward to do, but uh, inner tube wise, just get you guys one of the inner tube. Here we go, that's the company they're from, Elite Tubes and Tyre Supplies Limited. Pause and have a look at that. And Bocker tubes, wherever they are. Ten inch tubes, which presumably fit all mini all mini ten inch wheels from one four five to one six five seventy profile tyres. So, how do we do it? I've never done it before. I was a bit worried about it because when you when you look at a, a rim and you look at a tyre and you think, well, how the hell does that go on there? I've seen videos of bigger wheels done, 16 inch wheels, where there's a lot more flexibility in the tyre to help the fitter get them on. What's it going to be like trying to get them on a small DD 10 inch wheel? Well, my advice to you is look here on the floor here, two blocks of wood. I've stuck some sticky back foam onto the wood, and the reason I've done that is, is to protect the rim I've just painted. You'll understand why I've got those two blocks of wood in a minute, but from trying to fit the tyre onto the wheel, I would approach the wheel to get the tyre on from the back of the wheel. The reason I'd do that is, is because if you do damage the paint around there using these tyre levers, it'll obviously be the back of the wheel which you can touch up um, to no great harm and leave the leave the front unblemished and sitting the wheel on a block of wood a protected block of wood as these are allows you to approach the wheel with the tyre at an angle and you'll probably appreciate a little bit more in a second as to why the tyre needs to approach the wheel at an angle to get it on so I'm using no specialist equipment blocks of wood and a tyre lever 
and let's see how we get on. Let me get the, the tyre. Now the other thing we need as well is the magic formula of lemon. Make sure it's the lemon variety of washing up liquid. The tyre in this case is a Falcon, probably the cheapest one you can get out there, 165, 70, 10. Still a decent tyre. I think they're about £35, the cheapest I've got them from Plus Fat um, from Huddersfield Mini Spares. My advice to you is even though they're, they're a symmetrical tread, there are some um, little markings on the one side with the barcodes on. I'd preferably have those towards the inside of the wheel. So I'm going to attack the wheel with the tyre and I will be having the clean side of the wheel with no, sorry the clean side of the tyre with no barcodes on facing the outside of the wheel. So the exciting part of just adding a bit of lubrication to the rim. No doubt in a few months time, hopefully when the car's on the road, I'll be creating bubbles when it rains and all of this starts to wash off. But yeah, try and, um, try and get it around the rim. And offer the tyre up with the lubricated side, pushing down onto the rim. Now, when I look at that, I think there's no chance in hell I'm going to get that tyre onto that rim. But I need to approach the, the, the wheel with the tyre at an angle because I'm trying to get the lower portion of the tyre rim over the bottom part of the rim itself. Now, I'm going to try and use my knees to manipulate the bottom part of the tyre just to lap over the bottom part of the rim. Tyre lever, there's two, two ends, one's got a slot hook on, the other is a more traditional lever shape. By using Using one of these, you can start to feel things opening up. Up goes the weasel, and you've got part one done. Now, I've gone for the inner tube attack on this. I have got a little bit of air left in the compressor here. Now, the key to these inner tubes is they're not like bicycle inner tubes where the valve is centrally mounted on the, on the width of the tube. Because if I blow this up slightly, it's always best to just put a little bit of air in, so it's got a bit of a shape to follow. What you may notice is the valve is actually 
on partially on one side of the tube wall it's not on the middle so you have to basically determine which side the valve is sticking up and as you can see on this the valve is pointing upwards and that must be pointing in the direction of the hole in the wall of your wheel so my hole is there between these two stud centers here it's there so I'll get that pointing north I will make sure the valve is pointing downhill towards the hole and possibly by putting a little bit too much air in I haven't helped myself into the tyre and hopefully get it over the rim of the wheel so the tube is now sat fully into the rim of the wheel. Now is my opportunity to try and get the valve through that hole there which did give me a bit of a concern initially on how to do that and the easiest way I found to do this using an old part of a, an old school bike pump hand pump is use one of these cycle pump adapters because luckily the end is small enough to go through the hole and thread onto the valve. Which is giving me the ability to pull the valve through the hole. So now The tyre half on, the tube in the well of the wheel, I've now basically got to complete the process and get this back part on, the back part of the tyre. So again, I'm going to offer a bit of lubrication, don't have to go mad with that, just create that slippy edge. Again, the tyre at an angle.
trying to use my knees to get as much of that tyre on as possible. Using the hook end, I feed that underneath the hook, and once it's underneath, I turn it over. So I've got the leverage on the edge of the rim to pull the tyre over the top. Obviously this uh, lever is in a slightly sensitive area between my legs. As you can see, bang, on it goes. So, a bit of knee strength, forcing the tyre on at an angle, pushing the tyre as far that way as possible allows you to, with a couple of good levers, you are going to get a little bit of scratching on the edge of the rim but it's on the inside of the wheel and a bit of spray paint you know yeah, sprayed into a cup for a bit of touch up we'll, uh, we'll cover all that anyway so there we go luckily this saved the day because the valve's not popped through I can now jiggle the valve back into position unscrew the old bicycle pump adapter. I'm just looking around to make sure I've got no bits of tube pinched between the wheel and the tyre and I haven't. All the tube seems to be within the tyre. So I reckon I've got enough air in the compressor. PSI in there, but I can feel the tube inflating and I can see and I can hear the wall of the tyre, so I've probably only got about 15 PSI in there at the moment, but Put that up a little bit more later on, but there you go. Tire levers, two blocks of wood, and a bit of lemon, lemon washing up liquid. Job's done. Some nice traditional uh, banded wheels. And as you can probably see, if I can take the camera. The other, the other three there, and then up on the wall at the back, I've got another couple. They're actually wider banded wheels. I'm probably going to stick those onto the. I'm probably going to stick those two on the back and two of these on the front, and have a couple of spares. Um, but that one on the back wall there, you can see it's got the. It's got the chrome disc in the middle. Uh, we should finish it off quite nicely. And as soon as the Mini gets sprayed, 1972 K-Reg Mini, primed and ready to go. MG Metro engine, nothing particular fancy about it. Um, probably spray it with uh, my faithful Fuji turbine which uh, operates like a reverse vacuum cleaner I'll video that once it's on 
but uh, yeah we'll get the wheels fitted once it's painted up and uh, away we go so thanks for listening and um, look out for the next video